I am Kristen Kish, and welcome back for round two of my collab with Upward. Today, I'll be continuing to build my dream team of independent professionals to help create a personal passion project of mine, a guided culinary journal for kids. Being an adoptee, I really wrestled with my own identity. And knowing what I know now, I feel it's so beneficial that people of any age embrace their own unique qualities. This journal will be full of illustrations, open-ended cooking experiments, and journaling prompts to help kids find their creative voice. In our last round, I hired Lisa Wee, an incredible illustrator, and today I'll be chatting with three authors before hiring one to join the team and help me bring my vision to life. And of course, the best part, proceeds of our journal will be going to the Austin-based charity, What's in the Mirror, to help them continue their admirable work, promoting mental health awareness and suicide prevention to the LGBTQIA community and communities of color. All right, here we go. Hi, my name is Tamisha Booker. I'm from Eastside San Jose and currently live in the Bay Area. My background as a early childhood mental health therapist really informed the work that I do as a children's book author. I created Hey Carter Books, a three book series in 2017, which is inspired by my son, all focused on building self-confidence and pride. What do you like about your brown skin? It's amazing. I've always dreamed of a life where I can have a healthy work-life balance. So I'm really looking forward to the day where I can be a full-time freelancer and spend time creating and just being present for my family. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm good. Can you just give me a little bit of background on who you are and your journey thus far? I never imagined that I would be a children's book author. I started writing children's books when I became pregnant with my son. It was a very, very just difficult time for me processing all that was coming my way about bringing a black son into this world and felt the heaviness of that. I wanted to elevate black joy and put black boys front and center. So I started to write children's books and I've sold in the six figures of books since this is all self-published. My books have been seen in the Today Show on ABC News. Stephen Colbert on The Late Show wrote a poem about me. And my business and brand is all focused on building that self-confidence and pride in young children. What was the life before? authoring. <laughs> uh, so I've done a therapy in a bunch of different settings, including private practice and nonprofit counseling centers, and more recently in healthcare. So coming from a family that's Caucasian, I clearly didn't look like everyone else. So I did struggle immensely with my identity and self-worth. Have you had any struggles um, with your identity? I am one of few dark-skinned people in my family and didn't receive a lot of those cultural messages about like loving my hair, or loving my skin, and just who I was. So as a child and as an adult, you know, had to work through that. I'm living that process right now with my son. You know, my son also goes to school in a predominantly um, white area, so we are constantly trying to find ways to support him wherever he is on his journey, but also let him know who we are and where we come from and combine that together. So I like that we've already established a similar yes. emotional connect there. What is your writing style? I pour in elements of who I am. I also love writing in rhyme. It helps with reading comprehension. And also there's a cultural piece to that. You know, all of my books can easily be transitioned into like a rap or a song. You know, I'll snap my fingers and like trying to catch it, you know, when I'm writing. And then when I, when it hits that beat and that cadence, I know I've got it. So can you sing? I do a little rap. <laughs> can you do some? I am brown and amazing, what can't you see? I am brown boy, joy, always reaching for the sky. I walk in the room with my head held high. Brown boy, joy, brown boy. I, love, I already feel inspired. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You are an absolute joy and I appreciate all of your time and stories mm -hmm. and willingness to share a lot of who you are. So thank you very much. Thank you. What I love most about Mishi is she has seamlessly somehow interwoven her experiences and her stories into storytelling for so many other people, which I think is a skill and it's an art. She is smart, she is aware, she is empathetic, um, and she honestly just was really nice to be around. 
Hi there, I'm Evie. I'm a USA Today and Wall Street Journal best-selling writer and award-winning children's author. I'm originally from Germany and now live near Washington, D.C. with my husband and my two boys. I really love what I do. I love writing children's books. It's something that really relaxes me, especially because that's something I do at night when everybody's already sleeping. I often write a candle like this one and then I start writing. I wrote my very first children's book with my then um, two-year-old. While he was already potty trained, he had a really hard time transitioning from a potty chair to a regular toilet. And because I couldn't find any books on this, I decided to write my own. That's how a need has turned into a real passion of mine. My freelancing business has allowed me to take my free time hobby and turn it into something I can now make a living with. Hi, Evie, how are you? Hi, Kristen, I'm great. How are you? It's so great to meet you. Likewise. Can you just kind of give me a little bit of information about who you are? Yeah, I wrote my very first children's book back in 2013 and since then have written and co-authored and ghostwritten nearly 50 children's books, picture books, all the way to middle grade chapter books. What were you doing before being this children's book author? I was born in former East Germany to a German mother and a Vietnamese father. My country back then was a very homogenous society. I was the only non-white girl in my entire town. Exclusion and rejection were constant companions throughout my childhood, and it was these early experiences that planted the seeds for the work I'm doing today, because that's when you know, I first experienced the power of books where I identified with the characters. It was in this make-believe world, I finally felt accepted. Everything I do now is focused on helping little ones or see how special they are. I mean, I can certainly relate to that because being adopted, I grew up with a Caucasian family and my mom would do everything that she could to introduce me to Korean culture. How over time did you evolve into a place of finding that acceptance where you could feel a bit more at ease? It wasn't until much later in life, very much like your story. I wasn't aware that I looked different, you know, until kids started pointing out my eyes or, you know, my hair or calling me names. Learning about your story, watching your interviews has actually been almost therapeutic, you know. Seeing you talking about your heritage and being adopted and being confused has really touched me, you know, and has has really inspired me. So yeah, I can only imagine what impact your journal can have on children on so many levels. Thank you for saying that. You know, it was interesting when everyone started going back to their roots and cooking the food that they grew up with. And I felt like I was supposed to start to do that. And I was like, well, I, ca I can't connect to Korean food on like a personal level. I can connect on it because I love to eat it. I just accepted that an emotional connection may never be made and that's also okay. Outside of you being who you are for your job, mm -hmm. what do you find the most successful and joyful about yourself? For me, it has always something to do with writing just because I don't see it as a job. You know, I, I love it so much. That's what makes me happy. And, you know, it's kind of um, a mantra of mine that, you know, it's not about finding ourselves. It's about creating ourselves. Thank you so much, Evie. Yes. You are an absolute pleasure. Uh, much love to your husband and your kids. Thank you. Thank you so much. So what I love most about Evie is her experience. I mean, the amount of books that she's already written is astounding to me. I think that's what really makes her special and really sets her apart. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Brianna Bohan and I reside here in beautiful, sunny Florida. I am a published children's book author. I've really always been drawn to writing since I was a little girl. Instead of telling me stories from storybooks, my grandmother and I would actually create stories one sentence at a time, back and forth, taking turns. <laughs> she really instilled in me this kind of creative force to invent stories, especially for youth. And the inspiration that I draw for these books really comes from educating, inspiring, encouraging youth, whether it's listening, being a good mentor, setting a good example, never giving up. Being a freelancer is wonderful because it allows me to work a variety of different jobs and to always continue to pursue my various interests. Hello. Hi. Can you just give me an overview of how you've gotten to where you are now? I am the CEO and founder of a nonprofit that I started in 2019 called A Home for Art. I utilize expressive arts with disadvantaged youth, whether 
homeless or in foster care, uh, hospital settings, what have you. And then I'm also a clinical mental health counseling and expressive arts therapy intern, and I work with kids, teens, adults, etc. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and my first children's book I actually wrote when I was 15 in the parking lot of All Children's Hospital where I was going to be fit for my brace for scoliosis and I was really stressed and what came out was my first children's book called Harold the Duck Learns to Fly. What are all the, what's all the frames around the door? Master's Clinical Mental Health Counseling, the Bachelor's in Creative Writing and Psychology. These are my children's books, which I actually have here in front of me. Oh, can I see? Um, if you, yeah. So this is the Great Monster Cookbook, created characters to go along with it, right? Because then kids are like, I'm making characters and I get to eat them. We have the Tree of Dreams, Follow Your Dreams, You Can Do Anything. And then the first one I ever wrote that I told you about is Harold the Duck Learns to Fly. So I, I think back to my life about all the things that were really hard or challenging and then coming out on the other end. And have you had any specific examples of that? I definitely had a troubled childhood. Mother struggled with mental illness. Father struggled with drug abuse. Going to live with my grandmother, I struggled a bit. I got held back. I was a bully at points, um, I recognize. I could have kept going in that direction, but to be able to turn all weaknesses, all struggles into moments for growth has been huge for me. All of a sudden, this whole world opened up and I was like, wow, I'm not what they said I was. It was so empowering to find myself in education and that's why I'm a big proponent for it now. It's admirable, so thank you very much for sharing. Oh, I appreciate that, thank you so much. So what I love most about Michelle is I feel like having driven, ambitious people, that's always a big win. I'm excited to make all of these calls, but I think this one for me, I'm really, really excited. <gasps> she didn't know it was me. She's not answering, but it's okay, because I'm going to keep calling and calling like a weirdo. And is someone supposed here. to be calling me? Keep getting it. Hi, it's me. Hi. Oh, I kept sitting in a voicemail because I'm recording. I'm like, I keep I know. someone's calling me. I'm like, Ignore, ignore, sorry. I just kept calling and calling because I'm very excited. I knew from the first 10 seconds that we were talking that you were the right person. Everything about you was in line, in step, in sync, maybe is the right word, and the rap sealed the deal, quite frankly. I'm thrilled to offer you the position as co-author for this guided culinary journal. So you are the winner! Oh my goodness, I'm so excited, thank you. You're welcome. I'm excited to get to work with you. Yeah, me too. Thank you so much, Kristen. All right. Bye. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Wow, I just speechless. Next time, I'll be looking to hire the final professional to join our team before rolling up our sleeves and getting to work. I'll see you next time.